everyone, it's Brenda with MyPastorsWifeDesigns.com and today I wanted to show you this card that I made using the stamp set that I thought I didn't like. I received this stamp set at the convention this summer and when I got it I just looked at it and I thought what in the world would I do with that? There's really no, not that many options. So I traded it with a friend. Well, it turns out when I got home, I seen a couple of cute ideas and then I had all these ideas. Well, what if I had that stamp? I could do this. I could do that. So I ended up buying the stamp set that I won that I traded. I find that I do this more often than I'd like to admit. I'll see a stamp set that I'm really not that wowed by and then I either don't get it and regret not getting it, or I get it and find that it's a go-to stamp set that I use all the time, which is what this set's turning out to be. So today we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this card using this step, stamp set, excuse me, and this stamp set, Crazy About You, which also happens to be another one that I really didn't care for, but my upline talked me into it. She said, Brenda, you're gonna love it. You're gonna use it a lot, so go ahead and get it. So I did. So those are the stamp sets that we're gonna use today and to make this card, and I also just wanted to show you another little idea that I had made another card um, using those two stamp sets, and it's just turned out to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that you're going to need is a piece of the Delightful Dijon cardstock. And I've already cut mine for a card size, scored it so that it's ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a nice crease with my bone folder. And I am going to grab some Mossy Meadow ink, and we're going to go ahead and stamp the leaf image from that Crazy About You stamp set. We're gonna use this image right here. I've already got it mounted on my clear block, and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the and in Mossy Meadow. I'm kinda gonna just do a little random stamp off on it, and you can do it however you want, however you want your design to be. I'm not really great at random. It always seems to turn into a pattern, which is probably just fine. All right, got that done. I'm gonna clean that stamp off and close my ink. Always a good idea to close your ink when you're done with them, just so that they don't dry out. They last a lot longer if you will not, you know, let them dry out. Okay, now next we are going to just set this aside and we are gonna get a piece of about four by five. Use Whisper Wider, um, or skew, yeah, Whisper White. You could probably use Very Vanilla too, but I'm gonna use the white because that's kind of what's on my designer's series paper that I'm gonna use. So, how are we gonna stamp that acorn and use that punch in the most efficient way possible? So, I have made myself a template, and I used the punch and I used some old paper that I had, and I went ahead and punched my paper, and then I flipped it over and put some light colored cardstock behind it so that I could see it and be able to see what I'm doing and then I covered mine so that it wouldn't come off. So I'm going to use this to show you how we're going to go ahead and make that punch work to the most um, to our benefit and use the least amount of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and from my a corny thank you I am going to use uh, the polka dot because I just think that's super cute and then I'm going to use the striped one. You can use whatever ones you want. It's your card. There's really no rules. I'm going to take these two stamps and I'm going to place them image side down so it's against the paper soft side up for mount or solid side up for mounting. I'm going to set that right there on my template. You see how those just fit right on there? They're going to line exactly up with the punch. I'm going to set my clear block on it Make sure, well, make sure it sticks and not to the paper, which it's doing. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and um, be able to stamp this now. So we're going to go, and I'm going to grab my early espresso ink, which is my favorite. And then I'm also going to get some baked brown sugar. You could use crumb cake. You could use um, our... Soft suede, you can use whatever you want, but those are some really rich colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink, ink this up, and I am going to stamp this on one end of this paper. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're gonna do a couple of images and I wanna have room to punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that. There's my image. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clean my stamp because I'm gonna need it again. And then I'm going to use the 
going to turn it. That's the other thing I wanted to show you. Turn it because of what we're going to do in a minute. Go ahead and stamp my, or ink my stamp up with the baked brown sugar. And I'm going to come down here with it so that I have room. And there we go. And then I'm going to clean that up. And then I've got the thankful from, again, a corny thank you. I'm going to use a th the thankful. You could use the grateful for you or whatever you want. But for this card, this is the one we're going to use. And again, let's just close our ink. Don't want them drying out. And then I'm going to grab the delightful Dijon again. You could also do this with the um, Mossy Meadow if you wanted a real contrast on your stamp or on your card. And I'm going to go ahead and just ink that up. And I'm going to put that up here where I have some space. And our stamping is done. Now is what we're going to do is we're going to get our punch out and do some trimming and we're going to make one more acorn. I'm using the Delightful Dijon Designer Series paper. You can see that it's two-sided. This is going to be perfect to make a contrasting acorn. So go ahead and just grab your acorn builder punch and you're going to slide that in, punch it, and you are done with that paper. Then while I have this in my hand, I am going to grab my scissors and I am just going to trim the stem off of the top of this one so that it's not going the opposite way of my topper. All right, and then I'm going to just set that there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to punch out these. And now you're going to see how great this is when we use that template. Everything, because I could place my stamp or my um, clear block right up on my stamp, I can punch that out. I'm going to flip this around and I am going to punch my other one out. See how easy that is? And I, it just takes so much extra work out of uh, the lining things up every time. Just make yourself that template. Now we are going to cut this thankful. I just fussy cut it and a little tip, I tend to just move the paper instead of always trying to get a good cut with my scissors I'll move my paper and I have a little bit more control you fussy cut however works best for you I don't think there's any hard and fast rules and if it doesn't turn out what the way you want it stamp a new one it's a piece of paper and you know there's a lot of things to get worried about or stressed over paper is not one of them so we're gonna go ahead and get that cut all right, those are all cut. My cuts are done. Now I am going to really kind of just start my card assembly. I've, I do have all my pieces. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to show you how we um, made our nest for our card. So you see this little nesty thing we've got going on? I took a piece of this ribbon and I used my... Um, Actually, I'm going to use these other scissors. I think they're sharper. And I just went along and I cut the ribbing off that top of my ribbon. You see how that just, just go along and cut that edge, that binder is what it is. It just binds it so your ribbon doesn't fray or come apart. But in this case, we want it to be able to come apart. So we're going to go ahead and just trim this binding edge off so that it's not there. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to use your paper piercer. You can use a straight pen or something else, but I like the paper piercer because it just works so well and just helps pull those fibers right out and also nobody really gets injured, which could happen. With a straight pen, you could poke yourself or, well, I suppose you could poke yourself with this too, but anyway. And you're just gonna pick these fibers out. You can see how quickly it goes. Uh, and then, you know, if you wanted to do it on the next card, which I did, I don't want to waste it and I wanted to try a different color on that other card that I showed you at the beginning of the video that had the oranges and um, blues on it I used a, the white fibers out of this for my nest and that way I didn't have any what I felt like was waste I'm pretty sure it's just ribbon and really is it that much waste it's you know a couple cents so got my crumb cake pulled out of this strip here and now I'm going to be able to make a nest out of that. All right. 
So now we have everything we need to assemble our card. And we've got our ribbon here. Again, it's the crumb cake um, striped with the gross grain. And I just used um, my fast fuse. The reason I used my fast fuse is because the ribbon, I just think it sticks down a little bit. And I kind of line it up here on my grid paper so I can kind of have, oh, okay, this is about halfway. And I'm going to run my um, adhesive along there. So I've got my fast fuse stuff sticking to it and I'm just gonna run about halfway about the middle of my card and remember with your fast fuse give it a check mark so it comes off super easy and that's probably overkill but you know what I'm okay with that and I'm gonna just lay my ribbon down give it a press then I'm gonna use my scissors here and I'm just gonna cut the edges you could probably line it up exactly so you have no overage but you know, you don't want it to fray, and you don't want to end up with it too short. I've done that before, and that's very frustrating. That's like, dang it, if I had just cut an extra half an inch, the frustration level would be gone. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. All right, so we've got that. Um, now we're going to build that little nest. So take your fast fuse again, and just over here on maybe the um, the, I don't know, quarter a quarter of the way in go ahead and put it some fast fuse down I tried this snail and it just didn't work as well because there's so many layers then I took these fibers that I pulled out of my um, ribbon and I um, just kind of played with them until I had like a little nest it doesn't have to be perfect and then I laid it down on my fast fuse kind of messed around with it bunched it up don't really care you know it doesn't have to be perfect you want it to be a messy nest so I'm going to set this up here for a second and we're going to go ahead and assemble our acorns so I've got my acorns lined up here and I want to go with the contrasting colors and I'm going to get them put together here and just use your go ahead and just use your snail on these that's really um, not they stick better you don't need the fast fuse I don't think go ahead and do your contrasting on that one and you can go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tops off of these just because it's kind of hard to get your adhesive on it and you really don't need the two stems so I'm gonna go ahead and give him some snail that's gonna go on my um, baked brown sugar acorn and then got my early espresso acorn and I am going to go ahead and get it assembled. Okay, you have all of your acorns. So now you're going to use your fast fuse again. And you're going to um, adhere the, these acorns, your, the ones you stamped. And I'm going to put one there. And I am going to put the other one just across from it. Again, I use the fast fuse, just hooking it to those fibers. I think it works better. I'm going to put that one there. Then I'm going to use um, some Stampin' Dimensionals for the acorn and the thankful, just to give them a little pop off. I'm going to put one there and one there. Go ahead and get the back of it off and set that right there and then I'm going to do the same thing with my thankful again I like it to just that little extra pop off and it should still be able to mail even with it popping off like that because there's really no embellishments on it just that raise and it should be just fine and then I'm going to turn my thankful over so it reads right and I'm just going to kind of stick it right there and there you have it, our thankful card using a corny thankful, or a corny thank you, and there you go. And again, the other card that I made using the same set, different colors, and the, a couple of the different stamps, and the burlap ribbon, and I got that card. And like I said, I've used it in wreaths, I used it on our witch hat that is in our holiday catalog, so... Get this stamp set. Like I said, you may not think that it is something you wanted, but it is going to be one of the funnest stamp sets that you use because you're going to come up with all these great 
um, fall ideas and Halloween ideas and just it's just a lot of fun. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope until we meet again that you keep it creative. Thank you.